Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is straight to Boston here today. I'm back for episode number 15 of my Boston Bruins BGM series here on NHL 16. So today, we're continuing forward with season number two, approaching the trade deadline less than a month away, and we're getting some pretty significant trade offers here. Alexander Kokolchev, uh, the interest of many teams around the league, especially teams looking to sell off pieces, including the San Jose Sharks, who offered us Brent Burns, a 90 overall defenseman for Kokolchev and two first-round picks. Now, I had to turn that down. That was a little bit much, and it's not exactly what I'm looking for. Burns is a right shot, um, and he, you know, is even a little bit more than what I honestly need. Uh, I think two first-round picks is a little bit much to give up for anybody. Um, if it's just going to be a one-year rental, a 30-year-old like that, if I was going to give up two first-round picks and a player like Kokolchev, it'd have to be for you know a young guy who I could see being on the team for uh, you know four, five, six years down the road. So anyway, though, clearly Kokolchev has a lot of value around the league. And he is probably going to be the odd man out at the deadline if we do decide to make a move for a defenseman. And I do say if because the team has just been playing so well that, honestly, part of me feels like I shouldn't even mess with it. And, you know, maybe the fact that we have four really good lines is contributing to the fact that we are, uh, that we do have the best record in the league at this point. And I don't know. I mean, maybe if we wanted to make a move for a defenseman, we could make a move without giving up anyone, um, you know, any of our 12 forwards or any anyone like that. Any like a Kokochev or a Jimmy Hayes or a Brad Marchand. So, I don't know. It, does kind of give me that thought but at the same time um i still think we're going to need to add at least one defenseman if we want to make a deep playoff run just because i don't think having joe morrow or andrew ference playing the top four is really going to uh <laughs> lead to a lot of success come may and june but anyway there's david Krejci with the first good opportunity of the day he cannot finish and then here come the penguins as it is going to be uh, i'm not even sure who this is actually bringing it up i think it was kunitz he fires the one timer across and uh, that would be saved by rask so we're taking on the pitch for penguins second place in the Eastern Conference this year. This is the battle of the top two teams in the East. And look at Kokolachev getting it in on Marc-Andre Five-Hole right there. That was a soft, soft goal by Marc-Andre Fleury. And I don't really know how that one even got through. But Kokolachev, who really only seems to score when I use him, he doesn't really seem to do that well in the simulation. But I I don't know. I've seen like, it seems like I've gotten at least three or four goals with him in episodes so far this season. Here we go, though. This is going to be a hooking penalty coming up on uh, one of the Pittsburgh Penguins. That would lead to a 5-on-4 power play. So on the ensuing faceoff, it's going to be lost by the Bruins. But Griffith actually picks it up, and he is going to get high-sticked right there by Chris Letang. So just like that, it sets up a 5-on-3 with a, a full, almost a full 5-on-3 right here. So in the faceoff, Barry comes back along the right boards. Saucer pass over to Martian all alone in front. Scores! Backhand, forehand, right past Marc-Andre Fleury, and the Bruins have a two-goal lead here about midway through the first period. Take a look at the replay. Great saucer pass from Barry, and then Martian even could have just snapped this on end right here instead of decided to go with the little backhand, forehand, get Fleury down, and top shelf right there. So it's a 2-0 lead. Here comes Michael Bodker, gets the seal, goes through three Pittsburgh defenders all alone, and can't get it by Fleury. A good save by the Penguin netminder. And then here we go. This is going to be uh, Bergeron trying to retrieve that puck behind the net, but time would expire in the first. So we are through the first period here, Boston, with a 2 to nothing lead as they have looked good early on. Rask has been solid so far. Not too many scoring opportunities for the Penguins yet. But here we go, though. It is Bergeron with the puck. He's actually going to lose it here. Recovered by Hornquist. First shot is saved, but the rebound score. Patrick Hornquist gets his own rebound and gets the Penguins on the board here, making it a 2 to one ball game. Paul ball game, I should probably say puck game or something like that. But there you can see initial shot was saved, but Rask gave up a pretty bad rebound right there. And then Horquist did not miss the second time. So it is a 2-1 to one lead. And then here we go. This one is going to go back to our own end. Rask tries to play it out of his net. It's going to get intercepted here. Perron scores. But this would be ruled off a no goal. And you'll see why on the replay. Watch the goalie, Rask. He's going to get bumped into by Perron. And then you can see the, uh, or I don't even know. It wasn't really a pass that went back to him. But the puck found his deck. He put it in. But they would rule goalie interference. So no goal is the ruling. Now it's a 2-1 to one game. And a great glove save by Fleury. That shot was tipped on net by Jimmy Hayes and a great reaction so Fleury really starting to pick it up in the second period and he had to face a lot of power plays I think we had at least four or five power plays this game and Fleury did a really good job on the penalty kill you're going to see here we're on the 5 on 4 attack once again this was really our best chance of the attack the defense was really good from Pittsburgh tonight um, not really the case in real life but I think that's probably one of the reasons why they are doing so well in this game is our defense really limited our high scoring opportunities I mean other than the 5 on 3 opportunity and that one little Kokolchev goal we really haven't had much going so far Flurry hasn't had to do a whole lot but he has made the saves that have been there here's a nice move by Krejci and he is saved by Flurry. second time Krejci was all alone on a break this game but he couldn't quite finish then here comes 
Austin Matthews tries to feed it across to Griffith, but a sprawling post-to-post -post save by Marc-Andre Fleury. Now he's getting the chances, but there you go. Once again, a little three-on-two. Best shot we could get was the slapper right there. And again, just limiting our high opportunity chances. I mean... This Pittsburgh D was pretty impressive this game, at least I thought. But anyway, we are through two. It is a 2-1 to lead for Boston so far as we will look to hold that lead heading into the final intermission of regulation. So here we go. That is a nice check by Barry, but he can't quite pick it up. It's Hornquist. Got a 2-1-1 to Crosby all alone in front. Sick hands by Crosby, but a great reaction by Tuka Rask, and he makes the save to keep it a one-goal lead. And then Phil Kessel gets leveled by Zidane Chara. That is a sight Boston fans love to see. And I'm sure they will have enjoyed that. But there we go. We are going to go on the power, the penalty kill ourselves. As it's going to be an elbowing call on Zidane Chara as he elbowed somebody into the boards there. So here we go now. 14.35 to play. That shot just missed wide. Kessel tries to retrieve it. He's hit pretty hard by Bergeron and could not get anything going. Then another big hit by Bergeron. Now it's Krejci with it. He loses it. Kunitz all alone. Pad saved by Rask. He remains dominant so far tonight and keeps the lead at one and then just like that we are back on the power play once again this time it's going to be Kunitz going to the box so here we go Krejci in front of the net good save by Flurry Matthews gets it back sort of just holding it right now trying to find a passing lane gives it over to Barry at the top of the point his shot goes wide Marshan tries to feed one across to Griffith but that pass was deflected before it got through so here we go now, five minutes to play. This is Malkin trying to put it on net. And it actually went off of Chara's stick and then hit the post. But here comes Eric Faraglove, saved by Tuka Rask. 43 seconds to play. And then now 13.3 to play. One final opportunity for the Penguins, but a big faceoff went for Bergeron. Chara tries to get it in deep, but it's intercepted. Now here comes Phil Kessel all alone. Short side saved by Rask. And this game is over. As you're going to see one final opportunity from Crosby. But I don't even know if that shot would have gotten off in time. Or not gotten off, but gotten in in time. So anyway, we pick up a 2-1 to -one victory. Tuka Rask makes 17 saves on 18 shots. I think he's probably going to be... Uh, actually, Flurry might honestly be the first player of the game because Flurry had a really good night. He, uh, I think, stopped, I want to say, like 34 shots on 36 opportunities. But Rask was pretty much equally as good. And uh, you can see we almost outshot them 2-1. to one. That sort of explains the score right there. Definitely had the advantage in the Corsi battle, possession, and time on attack and stuff like that. And then we just sort of buried opportunities when we had them. But anyway, I thought Flurry did play pretty well. And Pittsburgh was kind of impressive. I mean, we outplayed them and still only won by one. A couple of bounces go their way. They easily could have won that game. So anyway, that is going to do it. Hope you guys did enjoy. Thanks for watching. And I'm out. Peace.